Hello and welcome back to another entomological tutorial. Today we're going to be preserving this giant cake Katie did. Uh, this is one I've raised myself. Unfortunately it didn't finish inflating one of its wing cases after it emerged from its final chrysalis. So we're gonna, gonna attempt to smooth this out. Uh, it didn't dry out after it died. This just I popped it straight in the freezer after it died. So it's already still nice and mobile. It's not dried out fully yet. I'm going to show you how we uh, eviscerate the abdomen, which is uh, emptying and cleaning this out, disinfecting it and stuffing it to make sure it doesn't lose its shape after it's emptied out. Sometimes insects can uh, collapse, so we're going to stuff that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the equipment I'm going to use, and then we're going to clean him and pin him. This is the equipment I'll be using. I have my favourite trusty tweezers. These are uh, AA, they're beading tweezers. I've had these for a number of years. They are my be all and end all I use these for basically everything I do have another couple of uh, tweezers as backups um, just if I need to be using both hands I have a scalpel which is what I'm going to use to cut the abdomen open it's got a number 11 blade in there uh, but if you don't have a scalpel don't want to use one that's fair enough I've got a small pair of tweezers sorry scissors you can also use scissors uh, these are just craft scissors nice and sharp uh, I have my trusty bat pin cushion with lots of pins in. These are entomological pins. I believe these are size two. I've also got some sewing pins because they're a bit more heavy duty for big insects like this. It's sometimes useful to have a few on hand that have a bit more bite to them. Now we have isopropyl alcohol. This is what we're going to use to clean and disinfect. And I have some cotton wool. This is just a natural fibre cotton wool that we're going to use to stuff once it's clean and dry. And the reason I use natural fibres is because they have a little bit more play to them than synthetic fibres. Um, but if you want to use synthetic um, plastic fibres, that will also work absolutely fine. So let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this all on the pinning board, but I'm going to pop down a piece of tissue before I cut into the abdomen because we're going to be removing his insides. So we're going to need something to catch any moisture. I'm going to get those antenna out of the way. Now this won't be gooey or gory or anything like that. This is just plant material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight down the middle with the scalpel. I probably could have got a slightly newer scalpel that would have been fresh and a lot sharper. I'm sorry if you can hear traffic going past by the way. I'm going to slice straight through the middle. There we go. Now, with some insects, it might be easier, you might find it easier to actually reverse pin your insect onto your board just to help it stop moving before you actually start this part of the process. Uh, I'm not so worried because I'm quite confident handling them, but if it helps, just pin them down. By all means, do that with a few of the sewing pins. So get that scalp away. I've got another piece of tissue here. And I'm probably going to use the curved tweezers. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Let's get a bit more light in here. And I'm going to zoom you in so you can follow what I'm doing. But essentially it is just now pull out any insides that are liquid. Anything gooey. Pop it onto your tissue that all needs to come out. and be discarded of because this is what will rot when you preserve your insect. This will all just turn brown and this will stain the abdomen and it will turn brown and look really unpleasant which is not what you want. You want to clean it out and disinfect it thoroughly. That stops any bacterial growth which is what discolours the abdomen. I'm just going to remove all of these in there. Mm, lovely and gooey. See, the longer after the insect has died that you wait to do this, um, you know, if you haven't frozen it or fully dried it out, the more advanced the... I'll just move that light, I don't want any strobing. The more advanced the rot will be, which means you might already get some brown discoloration. So it's important with bigger insects to get them as soon as you can after they've died. Um, and if you aren't prepared or able to do them immediately, pop them in the freezer. Um, you can dry them out 
but this can also like you can end up with some discoloration while they dry out it depends on your climate i'm in the uk where it's very humid and not very warm especially this time of year um, so i don't tend to dry bigger insects out first i will just pop them in the freezer nothing will happen to them there i just put them in a in a container uh, wrapped in a piece of tissue piece of kitchen roll that will help keep them from getting too frostbitten but they will otherwise just stay indefinitely in the freezer until you are ready to preserve them however if you live in a warmer climate and are able to get things that have just died you might find they've already started to dry out if that's the case before you start the evisceration process or if you've managed to and should dry one out. You will need to rehydrate it first. Oh, so many gooeys. Uh, you'll need to rehydrate it first in the relaxing chamber, which is easy enough to do. It's a sort of takeaway container tub uh, with damp tissue paper in. Leave them for 24 to 48 hours. Try not to leave them much longer. There we go. There's this, there's this digestive tract. This bit's going to be a bit gooey. Lovely. So you have to get all the way into the thorax to get everything out. There's a great big food bowl is in there. Mmm, delicious leaves. Now these guys feed on, in captivity, on a diet of bramble leaves. They're quite easy to raise. So that's what you're seeing here, it's digested bramble leaves. And I'm just going to get that second pair of tweezers and see if I can pull that out and detach it. Yep, easy peasy. is almost everything out of there. The bigger the insect, the easier this is to do because you can open up the entire body cavity and see. I'm trying to see if I can show you. In here. That is now entirely hollow. Ta-da! And this is what we're aiming for. Now it's going to look slightly different with every type of insect. You see they all have different internal anatomies, but the most you can clear out, the better it's going to preserve and hold its colours. Anything you leave in there that can rot will discolour it. Just going to take out this inner membrane. Then we're going to clean them out. I do actually quite enjoy the evisceration process. I don't do it very often, but I do think this is actually quite a rewarding part of the process of, you know, there's that extra step of cleaning something. Maybe it's because I don't do it very often that I find it quite interesting. Now I'm switching back to the other tweezers, they've got more bite to them. And that is something I tell everyone to invest in. You don't need a lot of expensive equipment to get started with this, um, pinning butterflies or, you know, cleaning insects, any of, any of it, but do invest in a good pair of tweezers. They don't need to be expensive, but they do need to be good quality. I think I got these for about £11. Um, they're not entomological tweezers specifically, they're for beading, um, like bead work and embroidery. Um, so I got them from a, a craft shop and that's what I have used. Now these are probably a little bit too fine for people who would want to, um, be pinning as a starter because they are very very fine and they make a very sharp point with a very fine point of pressure so for pinning butterflies you'd be better off with paddle tweezers but just make sure they're the best quality ones you can find and reasonably afford so there we go so I'm happy with that 
I'm going to, it wasn't as gooey as I thought, I'm going to show you the contents. I'm just going to take this light away because that's strobing and it's upsetting. That is the contents. Lovely. Done. Clean. Now I'm going to get my isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to take a tiny piece of cotton wool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this like a little sponge on the end of the tweezers. Let me zoom you back out. I'm going to use this on the end of the tweezers. Just dip in that. Make sure to keep the lid on the alcohol because that will evaporate very, very quickly. And then I'm going to just use this to brush all of the insides of the insect. See the head moving there? That's because I've managed to clean all the way down the entire body. This is not terribly dirty. It's not bringing out a lot of rotten brown goo. Tarantulas, I've found, are the worst ones for it um, because they're predatory, I think. Uh, they seem to have a lot more of a sort of bioactive gut, maybe. Um, let's put a bit more in there. Um, and they, as with sort of any predatory species, they have, they seem to have a shorter window because they seem to have more bacteria in their gut. Whereas these guys, they're just eating leaves. There's not a lot to need to process there. Little bit extra. I'm just going to take that off, and then the nice thing about the isopropyl alcohol is because it does evaporate so quickly, you can stuff them right away. You don't need to worry about drying because it will dry through the cotton wool. So I'm pretty pleased with him so far. He's been model patient so far. Okay. So I'm going to empty that out, have another quick look. Yep, nice and clean, bit pleased with that. Okay, now there's antenna. So now I'm going to stuff him with the cotton wool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear off bits of this at a time. So with animal taxidermy, like with mammals and birds, you make what's called a form and wrap the skin around the form and this will be a sort of slightly smaller model of what the animal's dimensions were uh, when it was alive and you can buy these pre-made or you can make yourself traditionally with things like wood wool or like foam carvings but with insects because they have the exoskeleton you're not wrapping the skin around anything the skeleton's already there what you're doing is reinflating it so rather than making a form um, it's a case of stuffing it from the inside and this is why I use lots of small increments of cotton wool. Let's get his legs out of the way please sir. Uh, it's because I'm trying to, oh my goodness, hold still. Uh, it's because I'm trying to reinflate that shape a bit at a time rather than wrapping it around one entire pre-made or predetermined form. And fold these bits out. Now, if you are having trouble with this, with this uh, part, what you can do is make the cotton wool damp with the isopropyl alcohol or wet. It will dry out, and that just makes it 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 shrinks. Uh, it shrinks the cotton wool obviously when it's wet and it does make it a lot more pliable and then you can worry about reinflating it once it's or it reinflating itself once it's in here there we go so i'm happy with that so i'm just gonna take that bit back out so we can seal it back up lovely let's get this other side as well there we go Have a look at him from the top. Yep, looking good. Nice and clean and green and not discoloured, not overly stretched. I'll put a little bit more in just this end piece here and then we will seal him up. Okay. 
Okay. Now, you can use glue if you'd like. PVA glue is fine. Wood glue is better because it's a PVA that goes off a lot faster. Um, I'm probably not going to worry too much about sealing him up until he's dried off, if at all, because I think this abdomen is just going to hold in place once I've pinned it, which I will show you as we go. But there we are. That's him back in his normal just grab that tail back in his normal arrangement nice full abdomen now i'm going to take this off and we're going to begin uh, pinning so what i'm going to do is i've got pieces of foam i didn't show these earlier i'm going to go through the uh, board now let me just sort my desk out so this is a piece of a piece of self-adhesive cork board on a piece of artboard like foam artboard and these are just pieces of polystyrene that none of this is high-tech equipment I uh, prefer to have more makeshift boards because I'm less precious about them and because they're easy to easier to change around as and when you need now the nice thing with Katie Dids is they're nice and square I know some pinned in the past, they're the same sort of dimensions in terms of leg as they are wings. Um, so I'm just going to test. Can we get you this way? I might turn this board. No, no, I think I will leave it. I think I'll leave it in this orientation. It's an A4 board, so I'm going to stick these bits, push these forward, and do that with my finger. And then I'm going to put him on the board where I want him. And then we're going to grab the pins. I'm going to put two. I'm going to put two of the heavy duty ones either side of his head. I'm not going to pin through him if I can avoid it. I don't like having holes in them unnecessarily. Now, these little feet have remarkable. Let me send you remarkable little hooks on them. There we go. These are your friend. You can use these to hook into the board just to hold the feet up there temporarily. Push that in there. That should hold roughly. Oh, lovely. I'm just going to put a pin, move that pin either side of the feet. And that will just hold that where it is for now. I can go back and do the full symmetrical orientation of it later worry about really getting everything in final position but to start with you just want to get him pinned to the board and nice and secure with these legs I'm going to move the other leg under those wings this is going to be you're going to be an issue young <laughs> there we go and these are quite fierce insects even when they're dead those barbs are, are a bit spiky Put down and out of the way. And then we're going to do the same with the other foot. Symmetry is your friend here. Even when you're rough pinning to start with, keeping it as symmetrical as possible makes things easier later down the line. There we go. So I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is get these wings out of the way to start with. Um, pop that. Them out of the way. I don't really don't want to snap these antenna. So I'm going to get the legs down and I'm going to get the wings out of the way, secure the abdomen that we've just reinflated in place, and then come back and do the moving of the wings into their final position. So at the moment, I'm not going to put these up on their foam board, I'm just going to get them out of the way. Pin them down. Now you can use whatever you like to pin them down. I've got glassine paper, but if you're just starting out, I always recommend using strips of greaseproof paper, like baking paper. I wonder if we're going to be able to smooth that out. Looks like it'll stretch somewhat. Um, don't 
spend exorbitant amounts of money on expensive different rolls of pin and paper because they do come in lots and lots of different sizes and thicknesses with the rolls or big sheets some people use glass plates to pin things down I've never got on with those myself I still use I like to use the universal like thickness of pins thickness of papers um, but before you invest in any paper uh, glassine paper I definitely think it's a good idea to figure out what thickness works for you and you can do that with baking paper greaseproof paper just cut strips yourself and get used to feel of pinning things down you'll soon discover where you, whether you're someone like me who likes multiple thinner strips or whether you want big sheets for one whole sheet to go over the wing that sort of thing now we're going to pin little tail bits i'm going to pin everything out as far as possible so you get nice big showy displays of all of his body oh you're lovely look at you this has risen quite a lot because i need a very deep frame for him should have learned my lesson with the last one. Now I'm going to move these wing legs down a little bit more. Give him as much space in his frame as possible. This is what I meant with um, repositioning everything after you've got the body secure. Because now that that's held in place a bit better, um, it won't dislodge and move everything at a later date. Now the camera is ever so slightly in the way of where I want to be looking so I'm using the viewfinder of the camera to check these are roughly symmetrical I might have to come back after I've finished filming and just do some final bits of symmetry um, what I'm going to do now is take these wings out of their pinnings and I'm going to put them on this board so I'm quite happy that these are out of the way these legs this in at a nice angle take this out get this leg down a little bit more but he's mostly out of the way I'm not too worried about that pin that after I know exactly where the wings are going to go I'm going to use some thick pins oh that's an upsetting noise oh I can't wait for the complaints about polystyrene noises <laughs> so just going to cut some slightly bigger pieces of the pinning paper what I'm going to do is uncurl that oh you poor old sausage you never did finish your wings did you dear oh dear I might use this up a bit <clears throat> hmm. I actually think yes, much better. This is going to give me a bit more height now, so I can get the top wing, um, the top wing um, as high as it needs to go. For the added symmetry and to keep the lines nice and straight i'll show you what i mean when we come to do the second one but roughly it's this line under that top wing case that i need or that i want to be nice and at a um 45 degree angle to the body again these are all roughly pinned okay so i'm gonna get Pin out of there now and let this come out flat. You're so lovely. Look how beautiful and delicate these wings are. going to use the same piece of paper but if you want to put in a second piece of pinning paper you can put in one pin here this will hold the end of the wing down 
I'm going to do is push these pins really far through so they go into the back board as well, just for extra stability. And then I'm going to get a little piece here. I'm also going to go through this here. And again, that just holds down this edge because with wings and wing cases, they are quite prone to curling if they're not pinned right around the edge. Wonderful. I'm going to unfurl that little part here. Oh, you are so lovely with such pretty wings. Give that a little stretch. There we go. Now, now we come to the really difficult part of how much can we do with this. Put this one in this way, didn't I? Yep. I don't know at what point this leg snuck up here, but um, excuse you if you could not. Lovely. Grab some more paper, and we're just going to do the exact same thing on this side, except we're going to flatten them out. Well, we're going to try. And this was the line I was saying earlier about getting this line across here with both of these wings. You want that to be 45 degrees to the body. And that's fairly universal with all butterflies and insects. When you're pinning, that's the sort of museum type of display. Obviously, most insects would never be in such a uniform and quite extreme pin position they would be in a more relaxed pose but that does mean that a lot of the time the wings are hidden up so this sort of more extreme and stretched out display pose is sort of what museums use to show off the full patterns of the wings because when they were sort of originally being collected and identified as species you needed to see the entire wing pattern to well to discern what species it was and identify it and compare it to others like this it's going to be a lot better than I thought. Get that back in the centre of the screen for you. Oh, she's so lovely. Well done. Good job, little wing. not as difficult as I expected it to be. I've done it with locusts before, which obviously is similar to crickets. It was a pain in the bum. Lovely. We shall see when it's unpinned how well that holds, but that's as good as it's going to get for now. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to bring the bottom wing up. Put that under there. Those neat and symmetrical. Yep, looks fine to me. And I'm going to put another pin, uh, another paper across both these wings. It's going to go at a different angle than on the previous wing just because of what we had to do with the end of the top part. Just 
Falling flat out. <laughs> and he has just walked past the window going ha 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 to himself. You do you, my dude. And when you're handling these, these wings are incredibly fragile. Probably only second to dragonflies, which are my arch nemesis to pin. So just be very cautious when you're going in with a second wing that they are very flimsy. There's sort of no structure and robustness to them whatsoever. They do need some real sort of encouragement to be held flat. That is the wings pinned out. Zoom you out a little bit. So that is the finished wing position. What I'm going to do is put in some little bits, uh, some little supporting pins under here to help keep this part up a bit more. I might use the tweezers to just unfold it first. I think that's what I did on the other side. Stretch it out. And then if I put some pins under here, that should, I'm hoping. <laughs> now, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Well, that stretch, now I need the big piece. Screw it, I'm going to put in a supporting piece of tape under here. because I would like that to be flat. And that rhymed. There we go. <gasps> Lovely. And yeah, let's have those two pins out. We'll do those again in a minute. Drawn that to under there. Oh yes. Wonderful. That will now hold this a little bit flatter and more universal. Last thing I'm going to do is pop these antenna up higher so you get the full height of the bug. Make sure that's as symmetrical as possible. Put that down a little bit and then we're there. I will go back through and just reposition a few little bits to make sure it's symmetrical. I didn't pin the wings, uh, the feet under the bottom because they're hidden by the wings. Uh, but here he is in all his glory. Or she, actually, I'm not sure. I might have been saying he this whole time. But that is how I pin a Katie did. Thanks for watching.